Hello video people, you're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff and today for you we have my opinion of the brand spanking new Color Finale 2 color grading software. Just for transparency's sake I did get an advanced copy of Color Finale 2 but the agreement as ever is that I give a warts and all review. I won't do any kind of fluffy sugar coated reviewing. Anything I don't like about the software you'll know about it. So let's check it out. So taking a look at the Color Finale 2 interface, we can see that we've got our basic controls here, exposure, contrast, pivot, which seems to be the pivot point on your contrast curve, which is really quite a handy thing. You don't always get that control, so that's nice. An auto white balance, which is so handy, and you can select the point at which it takes its reference from. Your standard tint slider, which is your kind of purple to green ratio. Saturation, sharpness built in, so this really is kind of an all-in-one plugin. Um, this sharpness is actually seems really good, it's quite subtle, and then all of a sudden becomes very brittle looking, like all sharpening plugins can do if you turn them up to full. The colour management section at the top is really handy, but I will go into that in a bit. It, it's basically, it's where you tell your plugin what sort of footage you're dealing with. The layers function in Color Finale 2 is one of the more powerful areas. If I just open it up, you can see you can add color wheels, color curves, vectors, and HSL curves. All really, really handy things to use. If you're going to be using Color Finale, this is where you're going to spend a lot of your time. You also have image analysis where you can, it will show you false color. Pretty handy. Also, you can see this color chart function. Now, this is potentially really really cool. Now I've got a color checker as you can see on screen but this is not the correct one. The one you need is the X-Rite color checker video and I'll link it below if you're interested but what an incredible tool this could be. The idea is that you can perfectly calibrate the color in your footage and yeah this could be fantastic. It also comes with a load of film emulation which is mainly about grain it's not something that I'm really into. I'm not really into grain so much. So, you know, unless it's, it's a particularly specialized project I'm working on, this is not something I'm going to be using a, a lot, but you know, it's good to, good to have it all in the same plugin. One effect that's not in this film emulation section is a vignette, and that's something that I use a lot. I don't know why it's not here. That's kind of confusing. I would definitely use that if this was built in. Maybe future versions might have it. And then, of course, we have a general mix of dry to wet, if you like, which is really handy. I generally like to input all of my settings and then back it off a little bit just to see how it looks, because, you know, it's really easy to go too far with things like saturation and sharpness and that kind of thing, and we don't want too much of that. Right, now we're familiar with the controls, let's now go ahead and grade a scene. Here we go then, we've got this clip which was shot in S-Log2 on my Sony a7S II, and there's a couple of things we want to do here. We want to bring the exposure down, and we want to decode that log look. Now, let's go into the panel now, and We've got this this thing here where, where it says color management, and what we want to do is to assume log, which adds the contrast and saturation and starts to decode the log look, and it's really handy. You can, of course, add your own lookup tables, but I'm just going to do it this way for now. Next, we need to bring the exposure down, and what I, I'm not going to do is use this slider here because it doesn't bring the exposure down in quite the way that I want it to. What I'm gonna do instead is come down here and edit layers. And, and I'm gonna add an instance of color wheels, and I'm just gonna bring down the masters of the gamma and gain. So the really bright areas and the sort of the mid areas. And I'm also going to just back off the contrast a little bit because that was, quite aggressive on adding contrast. And there we have that. That's a very, very simple way of doing it. This assume log function is fantastic. It seems to really get really nice colors. I can even just use uh, an auto white balance as well if I want to, which will tweak it. Looks a little green to me, so I can use this color selector. And let's just choose, let's choose middle gray. Let's go for that one and see what it does. There we go, much more warm looking. 
However, using the assim log function might not be the best way to go about it. Another really cool way to decode the log footage in Color Finale is to use the ACES function in the Color Management tab. ACES stands for Academy Color Encoding System, and basically you can tell the software what sort of log footage you're using. So in this case, I'm gonna go for S-Log2 Daylight. And there we go, it's added lots of contrast curves and that kind of thing. Obviously it's overexposed, and this is an occasion when I can use this exposure tab and that will bring it down. It looks a little magenta to me. So I'm just going to, let's try doing an auto white balance. That's made it look a bit green. So let's try on middle gray and just, there we go, that's good. If anything, it's a tad too saturated for my liking. So I'm just gonna back it off a little bit and tweak the exposure further. So there we go, that's the ACES function. It's a super quick way to go from a log to Rec 709 look in a matter of seconds. Next, we're gonna grade a scene where we import our own lookup table and see how the workflow is with that. So in this example, we have some footage which was shot with Sony S-Log2. It's overexposed, as you can tell, and I'm gonna use my choice of lookup table for this one. So I'm going to import my own lookup table and then grade it from there. I've got my waveforms out, as you can see, and you can probably tell that the clip is massively overexposed, so. Let's go about it then. So first of all, I'm going to tell Color Finale what we're doing. And at the moment, we've got it assuming it's video, so it just looks as if it's normal log footage straight out of the camera. You can assume log, which I've mentioned before, but obviously for this example, we want to use input LUT and choose our own one. I'm gonna use the Utopia LUT from Phantom, which is one of my favorites. It's really good looking. So there we go, that's added lots of contrast. It's added some color, which is nice. It's still massively overexposed. So let's go ahead and sort that out. So I'm going into the edit layers function and let's add an instance of color wheels. So I'm gonna bring down the gamma, tiny bit of the gain, and just bring it down into the right area of exposure and this to me this actually I can tell it's going to be more it's going to be more contrasty than I want it to be for the look I'm going for so I'm going to bring the contrast down a little bit to make it a little bit more even and uh, flattering okay and now I'm just going to stretch the footage out a little bit give it some depth bring the lift down which is our shadow areas and that's starting to look pretty good I would say I'm going to leave our highlights roughly where they are, and there we go. That's looking pretty good. The colours, I would say it's possibly a little cooler than I would like it to be, so I'm just going to tweak the colour temperature to make it look a little bit, you know, a little bit warmer, because this was filmed on a warm day and I want it to look like that. This was shot in 4K, I'm not, I don't need to touch this sharpness dial. And I would say, all in all, it's it's definitely saturated enough for me. So I'm fairly happy with this. Let's turn it off and have a look. That's where we started. That's where we finished. And it took me about a minute to get to this stage. And I'm really happy with that. It looks really good. It's very flattering. The skin tone color's good. Yeah, it works really well. So I really like Color Finale 2. But like all things, it's not perfect, and I've got some pros and cons. So I'll start with the pros, and firstly, it is an all-in-one solution for color grading. The whole idea of Color Finale is to eliminate the need to round trip to other bits of software to do your color grading. A really cool function that Color Finale has is that if you really like the settings that you've got, you can export them as a lookup table. Really cool. I really love the white balance tools in Color Finale. They're some of the best that I've seen in any kind of grading plugin. The ACES function, where you can match the color management to your log footage spec, is really useful. I can see myself using that. I didn't have the X-Rite color checker card to make use of this function, but what an amazing idea this is. I'm not big into adding grain to my footage, but I can't deny the quality of the grain emulation in this software. It looks really good. And now the cons, and they're possibly more like a wish list of things I wish they had. But here goes. Firstly, Color Finale 2 has grain emulation. Very nice grain emulation. I wish it had a really nice vignette emulation. The sharpening slider, whilst really looks good, 
I wish it had a little bit more control, maybe some radius, just a little bit more so that I can really fine tune it. Another thing is I really wish this software came with a few default lookup tables. Maybe just five classic examples. This is not a deal breaker, of course. I, I like lots of my own lookup tables. Just another wish. We get grain emulation. I'd really like vignette emulation. How about also some widescreen bars? It's a really easy thing to add. Again, definitely not a deal breaker, just something that I like using now and again, and would be cool. My dream color grading software of the future will look a lot like Adobe Lightroom, but with color wheels. I especially want that clarity slider for video. How cool would that be? So Color Finale 2 gets me a little bit closer to that dream. So thumbs up from me, it's good software. And that's it for now. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you could. Just hit the blob, it's over my shoulder. And I've got a large back catalogue of videos about video on this channel, of which YouTube recommends this one for you. And the one below is my latest upload. So until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.